autoimmune hemolytic anemia. This means an anemia caused by a person's antibodies that attack their own cells and cause a decreased survival of red blood cells. An immune hemolytic anemia shortens the red blood cell survival and is caused by an immune response. This is humoral immunity or antibody mediated. This can be caused by alloantibodies, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, and drug-induced immune hemolytic anemia. This chapter covers the autoimmune hemolytic anemias. An autoantibody is an antibody that is directed against an individual's own red blood cells. These autoantibodies and auto or autoagglutinins. Studies in animal models suggest that autoantibodies occur because of a failure of the immune regulatory response and they cause a shortened survival of red blood cells. Remember that your immune system is designed to detect and make antibodies against foreign and not self antigens. If a patient has decreased in vivo red blood cell survival, identification of an autoantibody may explain why this is happening. If a patient's red blood cells are coated with an autoantibody, the patient may present with a serologic ABO discrepancy, a positive RH control, or a positive DAT. A positive DAT, a positive auto control, or a serum auto antibody does not necessarily confer the diagnosis of autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Approximately 0.1% of normal blood donors and up to 15% of hospitalized patients have a positive DATs uh, with no evidence of hemolytic anemia. So the first group is well people who are not anemic and have sufficient hemoglobin to donate blood. The other people are unhealthy for some reason and have a higher rate of antibodies reacting to their own cells. Autoantibodies can cause immune red blood cell destruction that can produce either a compensated or an uncompensated uncomp anemia. In a compensated anemia, the rate of red blood cell production will nearly equal the rate of red blood cell destruction, while in uncompensated anemia, the rate of red blood cell destruction exceeds the rate of red blood cell destruction. If a patient is symptomatic, we can use serological testing to determine what the issue is. A direct antiglobulin test using polyspecific and monospecific antiglobulin reagents can detect antibodies or complement coating the red blood cells. If this happens, we can perform an elution to remove the antibodies from the red blood cells, and an antibody ID can be performed on the eluate. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia may be diagnosed and classified as cold reactive, warm reactive, or drug induced. Differences between individuals with autoimmune hemolytic anemia and those who are unaffected by autoantibodies are not clearly understood. We can also have hemolytic anemias without autoantibodies. We characterize autoantibodies by their optimal temperature of reactivity. With uh, about 70% of the reported cases of autoimmune hemolytic anemia react best at warm temperatures between 30 and 37 degrees Celsius, which is closest to body temperature. There are about 18% of cases caused by cold re reactive or 4 degree to 30 degree Celsius reacting antibodies, then about 12% are drug induced autoagglutinins. Starting with cold reactive autoantibodies, these are frequently uh, being found in serological testing. Most of them are not clinically significant, but occasionally they can cause hemolytic anemia. When testing at 4 degrees Celsius, the most Commonly encountered autoantibody is a benign cold agglutinin that may be found in the serum of normal healthy individuals. The typical cold agglutinin has a reactivity relatively low titer of less than 64 at 4 degrees Celsius. Cold agglutinins can interfere with routine plasma and cell testing performed at room temperature such as ABO, typing, the direct antiglobulin test, antibody detection and identification, as well as compatibility testing. Most cold reactive autoantibodies have 
and anti-big eye specificity. The big eye antigen is fully expressed on red blood cells of most adults, but only weakly expressed on cord red blood cells. The anti-little eye is a relatively uncommon autoantibody. This antibody reacts in, a, in an antithetical manner to the anti-big eye. Cold agglutinins found in the sera of group A1 and A1B individuals may have an anti-H specificity. Group O and group A2 cells react best because they have the largest amount of H antigens on them. Group A1 and A1B cells have the least H antigens, so they would react weakly with this uh, antibody. Other less commonly encountered cold agglutins have been described such as anti-PR, anti-GD, and anti-SDX, or also called anti-RX. These are also, uh, sorry, there are also pathologic cold agglutins which are more clinically significant. Cold autoimmune hemolytonemia may be chronic, idiopathic, condition or an acute transient disorder. Idiopathic cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia is mo most often associated with an infectious disease such as mycoplasma pneumonia, uh, pneumonia or infectious mononucleosis. A moderate chronic hemolytic anemia is produced by a cold autoantibody that optimally reacts at 4 degrees Celsius but also reacts up to 30 degrees Celsius. The antibody is usually an IgM immunoglobulin, which quite efficiently activates complement, which is obviously not ideal when you have something attached to your cells. Cold hemagglutinin disease occurs predominantly in older individuals, peaking at those over 50. Antibody specificity is almost always anti-big I, less commonly anti-little I, and rarely anti-PR. Laboratory findings in the cold hemagglutinin disease include reticulocytosis and a positive DAT, DAT due to complement only. The peripheral smear may show agglutinated red blood cells, polychromasia, and a mild to moderate anisocytosis and poikilocytosis. Most patients require no treatment with cold hemagglutinin disease, but are instructed to avoid the cold, keep warm, or move to a milder climate. When these people require transfusion therapy, the normal hypothermic surgeries may not be done this way. Blood warming is recommended if we want to test for aloe antibodies. Then we can auto-absorb the plasma to remove the autoantibody and then use the plasma for compatibility testing. So you want to remove the cold antibody so that you can find other uh, allo antibodies. Paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria is the least common type of autoimmune hemolytic anemia with an incidence between 1 and 2 percent. This is most often seen in children in association with a viral illness. The antibody produced is the donneth landsteiner antibody with an auto-anti-P specificity. Warm autoantibodies react best at 37 degrees Celsius. These are not found as often in the random population as the auto-anti-big eye. Some of these can be harmless. The harmless autoantibodies are serologically indistinguishable from the harmful ones. A significant percentage of cases suffer from an anemia of sufficient severity to require blood transfusion. Most patients with warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia have both IgG and complement on their red blood cells. A minority have either IgG only or complement only. These antibodies cause extravascular immune red blood cell destruction. The IgG immunoglobulins react best by indirect antiglobulin technique or an antibody screen.
Warm autoantibodies. These warm autoantibodies can interfere with the ABO, RH, DAT antibody screening and the identification test consideration for selection of blood transfusion. The units selected should be negative for alloantibodies, but units that are negative for the autoantibody may also be selected. Units that are selected should be least incompatible with autoabsorbed plasma. It is more important to be negative for the antigens matching alloantibodies. Drug-induced immune hemolytic anemia is when the therapeutic drugs may have unintended consequences, including immune destruction of red blood cells, white blood cells, or platelets. Drugs should be suspected as a possible explanation for immune hemolysis or a positive DIT when there is no other reason for the serologic and hematologic findings, and if the patient has a recent history of taking high doses of an antibiotic or other drugs known to cause this issue. The diagram here shows the three possible mechanisms for drug-induced immune hemolytic anemia called the unifying hypothesis where more than one drug-associated antibody specificity is present. A is a drug absorption, B is mimic warm auto, and C is immune complex. For drug absorption, the drug binds loosely or firmly to the red blood cell membrane, and the antibody reacts with the drug itself. If it mimics typical warm auto antibodies, the antibody reacts mostly with the red cell membrane, altered by the drug, or with immune complex, the antibody reacts with the combination of the drug and the red cell membrane. Haptin. Drug binds to the red blood cell and antibody formed is directed at the drug. The test methodology involves testing drug-coated red blood cells. Immune complex. Drug does not bind covalently to the red blood cells, but rather complexes with the drug antibody. Test methodology involves testing in the presence of the drug. Mimic worm auto. Drug induces an autoimmune response, but the antibody is directed at the red cell membrane. Testing cannot differentiate between drug-induced or idiopathic autoantibody. It is important to remember that more than one of these mechanisms may be active at the same time. In the Hapton mechanism, the drug binds to the red blood cell membrane and an antibody to the drug attaches directly to the drug. Since the drug is on the surface of the red cell, it is now coated with antibodies, which flags the cells for removal. Antibodies to penicillin are the most commonly associated with this mechanism. They are found in 3% of hospitalized patients receiving large doses of penicillin, but less than 5% of those will develop hemolytic anemia. Most penicillin antibodies are IgM and therefore will not be detected by the anti-human globulin test. And in these cases, a DAT would be negative, even though the antibodies are on the cells. When this Hapton mechanism occurs, a positive DAT is most often IgG and rarely binds complement. Without complement activation, the red cell destruction is extravascular and not intravascular. Like all drug-induced hemolytic anemias, this is rare and other causes such as immune antibodies should be eliminated first. The immune complex or bystander mechanism. This happens when an immune complex forms between the antibodies and the drug. This complex may temporarily attach to red blood cells and activate complement which will destroy the red blood cells. The drug interacts in a non-covalent manner with the specific membrane component and forms a new antigen or neoantigen determinant with both the drug and the membrane component. Because complement activation is involved in this process, the cell destruction is acute intravascular hemolysis and can lead to renal failure. Because the antibody is directed at the drug or a drug and red cell junction, the DAT antibody screen and compatibility testing will not be affected, but stopping the drug infusion is necessary to stop, to stop this hemolysis. Non-immunologic protein absorption or membrane modification is thought to occur when cephalosporins, especially cephalothin, are administered. The drug absorbs to the membrane, which modifies the red blood cell so that the antibodies in the plasma bind to it, but not in a normal 
antigen antibody reaction methods. These red blood cells in 3% of patients taking Keflin may exhibit a positive DAT with polyspecific and monospecific reagents. For all of these drug-induced hemolytic anemias, the treatment of choice is discontinuation of the drug. Patient history, including transfusion, pregnancy, medications, and diagnosis are important in the investigation of hemolytic anemias. Investigate uh, with a DAT panel with polyspecific anti-human globulin reagent and then monospecific anti-human globulin reagent if necessary. Screen the patient serum for red blood cell alloantibodies, then if necessary, perform an elution and test the eluate for red blood cell antibodies if the patient has been recently transfused. Thank you for listening to this presentation.